Venison, what does that word evoke for you? You probably think of just deer, right? Well, if you look at the origin of the word, venison is any wild game meat. Most people say it's cloven hoofed animals. You know, it's our deer species. Deer, elk, moose, caribou. A Couple of them that don't fall into that, black bear, antelope, but uh, venison's pretty easy to define. If you take the proper steps and precautions and cool the meat, keep the meat clean, most venison, it's going to have a little bit of wild flavor to it, but it's not enough to make people scowl. It's gonna make them say, this is unique. I kind of enjoy this. If you're looking to get into the organic lifestyle, put some venison in your freezer. You'll thank me later. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. With over 800,000 ranchers in the U.S., an average of 76 million daily consumers, and a total of 27.6 billion pounds purchased in 2020, it's safe to say that beef is the most popular meat in the U.S. But should it be? So the health benefits of venison, thats you can't argue that. Venison is the healthiest meat that you can eat. It's the healthiest protein that you can put in your body. Now when we look at what's in venison, yes, high in protein, great iron, you got all this good stuff in there. It is high in cholesterol, but mostly good cholesterol, but you do have to watch it. You know, I eat venison almost primarily, but I don't have a cholesterol problem, and that's into my genetics. But if you do have a cholesterol problem, you wanna look at it, you know, everything in moderation. Venison, it's pretty easy. Uh, most people say it's cloven hoofed animals. You know, it's our deer species. Deer, elk, moose, caribou. A Couple of them that don't fall into that, black bear, antelope, but uh, venison's pretty easy to define. You know, once you embrace eating wild game, especially venison, it's really hard to go back to eating fattier foods. I do like the occasional beef steak or pork chop, but deer, elk, and moose are the standards in our house. That's what we eat every day in, day out. And when you look at the protein content and the fat content and the cholesterol, it's actually a very healthy choice. Wild game actually stores their fat on the outside of their body, not only as a resource for nutrients, but also for insulation. Venison provides many benefits. First of all, it's lean, it's low in fat, it has many of the vitamins you need to survive. In fact, many of the B vitamins that will help you fight heart attacks and heart disease. It's in your budget to go out there and hunt deer. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, hunting's so expensive. And it can be expensive if you go on trips that are several states away and you're buying the top of the line high-tech gear. But if you just go out into the woods and try to hunt for a doe, maybe a small buck, some of the areas that are near home, not spend a lot of money traveling, not spend a lot of money on the highest end gear, you can fill your freezer cheaply and efficiently and economically with the best that nature offers. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by You know, meat care is a very important part of how the product is when it enters your table, it comes to the table. When you look at uh, slaughterhouses for domestic meat, they have quality control, and hunters should look at a quality control protocol for themselves. When I harvest a deer, especially if it's hot, I cool it down. There's several ways to do that. You can leave the hide on and stuff the cavity with ice and let it permeate through the bones and cool it off. If I get the opportunity to, I'm gonna take the hide off, break it down, get it in a cooler, you want to get it under 40 degrees Fahrenheit for sure. That is ideal so that the bacteria in it doesn't grow. Lots of people like to age their deer, but because there's not a lot of fat and moisture in the meat, it often dries. So a couple days of aging isn't as much aging as it is letting those muscle groups firm up, which makes them easier to cut, easier to tie, easier to wrap when you're storing them.
ending up with venison table fare that everyone is going to enjoy starts well before the hunt. You have to make a good shot because shot placement is critical. If you shoot an animal through the, say the guts or, or its digestive organs in the rear, you can spill that matter into the body cavity and that can affect the taste of venison. So you always wanna be practicing with your equipment, your rifle, your muzzleloader, your bow, to make the best shot possible. The other thing is if you don't make a good shot and that deer lingers for a while, it fills its body with adrenaline and that can also change the taste of the game. So prepare for the shots, so you make the best shot, and then once you make the shot, you have to make sure you carefully field dress that animal. You do not want any of the internal digestive uh, matters, the gut matters to get on any of the meat, too much blood to get on any of the meat, and too much forest or dust, dirt, that type of debris you want to avoid. That can all taint meat and the effect uh, how it can taste. A few things that can go wrong when you're processing your deer is you did not get it clean enough. You thought you did, but you left something up inside, maybe part of the lungs, maybe the, the throat, maybe you know something up inside. You didn't get that diaphragm out completely. Another thing is when you get to processing that meat and you're actually cutting apart the muscle groups, make sure you get rid of those lymph nodes. Number one, lymph nodes, we, we don't want them in our meat anyways, but that can taint the meat if you leave it in there. And that's where you get a, people talk about the gamey fla flavor. The gamey flavor comes from a couple things. Lymph nodes, it comes from silver skin, and it comes from tallow. And when you get that in the meat, that's what tastes gamey. The venison itself, on its own merits, it's just, it's awesome. Venison is extremely lean. You're not gonna see seams of fat within the steaks or roasts, whereas, you know, a good beef rib steak has lots of fat within it. So that changes all kinds of things. One of the biggest is how you cook venison. You know, fat is an insulator. And if you have fat marbled throughout a steak, it takes a lot more heat to cook through those fat layers before you can actually cook the proteins. Venison, there's zero fat to cook through. You put the proteins on there and they actually cook half the time that it would take a beef steak. And once you learn that and embrace it, you're gonna like venison a lot more. Like most things these days, venison isn't immune to cancellation, especially with the anti-hunting groups and their lobbying dollars hard at work. And it's a shame how much the existence of venison as a viable consumable is swept under the rug or literally left to waste due to a politically motivated campaign of fear against the purest and most organic protein on planet Earth. When you look at things like chronic wasting disease and other things that are out there, and there's doing all this testing, no human health concerns at all linked to chronic wasting disease. But yet there is this fear factor going on and it's politically motivated. When you think about it for a second, that whitetail that's out there grazing natural foods, you know, it's, it's eating everything that's possibly good in there. And then we're testing and upon testing upon testing and we're scaring people away from eating venison. And people are saying, well, you know, I'm not sure. Well, are you sure what's in your beef? Are you sure what's in your, your poultry and in your pork? No, you don't. You're basically going off of maybe an FDA inspection, but look at how many deer are tested. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of deer are being tested for chronic wasting disease, a disease that we know that does not affect us. Yet how many cattle are being tested for mad cow disease, a disease that we know that can actually affect human health, it can kill you, Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease. Again, this is not a bash on the cattle industry. They are very well regulated. But if you look at the statistics, deer are being way more tested and way more politicized than any other animal out there. And it's not because of the animal's concern so much as I think as what the politicians have to gain from it. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by
first day we were here, I think there was uh, five or six hunters out. We saw three deer total the entire morning, which is not untypical for a full moon. You know, if you look at the hunt stand app and the uh, solar information that's on there, you'll see that the active times for game, the minor and major movement periods are really well connected with moon phase and weather. And you can get a really good idea of when the good times are to be out there. Monitoring that, we knew that in the afternoon and later in the evening was going to be our prime time and that's when we really focused on the good spots. Western Oklahoma, winter wheat is key to whitetails. You know, it's a key food source. The, the farmers around here plant that in the middle of September, try to catch any fall moisture they can. It sprouts, it gets into the four leaf stage, it's green, it's nutritious, it's got high protein and the deer will travel for miles to find it. The next day out again in the morning, I saw five bucks. So a little bit more movement every time you get a little bit past that full moon stage, they move a little bit more. And uh, just wasn't a shooter in the group. There's a nice big mature buck, but he was at two point on one side, a great big heavy crab claw. And although he was interesting, I let him go because I know what's out here for deer. Last night, we're back in the same blind. In that native prairie, there's sage, there's uh, cedars, there's juniper. We had blind well concealed and it didn't take long in the deer were coming over the coolies again out of this huge draw of native habitat where they like to go in bed, where there's some wetlands, some scrub brush, some sage, really good deer country. So those deer work their way up out of those coolies, come into the winter wheat, you can see them popping up over the hills. They worked into the field and the first seven were there early. But just like the night before, one of the does spooked and took the whole crew out with her. So I was a little bit worried. We checked the wind three or four times. We knew it was good. So I don't know if a coyote or something else came in, but we stuck to our plan. And 20 minutes later, the does started coming again and boy did they come, you know, three, six, nine, seven. And before you know it, we saw that buck sneak and then we had seen it half an hour earlier. He was very easy to identify with a tall rack, wide, good weight, chocolate color. I mean, he's, he's a shooter deer, no matter <laughs> when you look at him. And I was kind of heartbroken when he left the first time, but we, we let him come in the field and he came way down to the south end. And I think our saving grace is that we had a couple does sneak in from the north could hear movement, peeked out the corner of the blind and up to the north there was four does moving around and they actually fed up right in front of us. Of course, as soon as there was no new does in the field, the buck took attention and we watched him down the south. He looked over and he saw those does and he just made a beeline for it. It probably took him a minute and a half at a steady pace and he was walking right into range. You know, I arranged him with that SIG range finder. I had him originally at like 325 cut it to 240 next thing you knew it was a 200 ended up at 140 yards in front of me which is perfect the does were milling around he was milling with them feeding a bit most of the shots were head on i didn't want to take that shot even though i was nervous that something might bust them they blow out i waited that buck fed and just didn't give me the right angle it took several minutes then he checked out a doe and sort of did a circle and headed back the other way perfect that broadside opportunity that is golden, you wait for, you know what's gonna happen, you get a clean punch through the engine room, you get a good blood trail, and you know they're not gonna go far. And that's exactly what happened. That deer uh, shot 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, maybe made it 70 yards. We watched him the whole way, I actually fired at him again just as he dropped, and uh, the rest is history. My Oklahoma Whitetail General Gun Tag is finished and uh, it's a great way to top off November.
Hey deer and deer hunting, here's a quick tip for you. There's a bunch of new crossbows on the market, whether it's new 10 point products or others. Always pay attention to what the manufacturer tells you to use with the knock. As technologies change, we need ways to harness this energy efficiently. This is the new 10 point Nitro 505, the fastest production crossbow on the market. We chronographed it, it definitely shoots over 500 feet per second. It duplicated at 509 three times. Beefier string, more energy, more power, 17 inch power stroke. 10 point had to go back to the drawing board and they came out with a new knock with a aluminum and a brass insert on some of them. It's called the Alpha Knock HP and you can see that it's uh, deep seated. It actually has more contact with the string. It's a bigger string so it accommodates that. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna ensure that that energy is transferred from the bow and the string to your arrow in the same manner every time. Why is it important? Because it prevents dry fire, it increases safety, it uh, gives you the accuracy, and it gives you the performance that the bow has. So the energy transfer from the bow through the arrow to your target, there's one little thing that makes that magic happen, and that's the knock. So anybody that complains about, oh, I've got to change my knocks again, don't worry about it. Don't embrace the new technology. Stick with your old, old bows. But if you want to shoot something new, something high tech, make sure you have the right knock to go with it. For your safety and for the future of your bow, it's very important. Alpha Knock HP. Okay, I know this isn't super high tech, but when I'm hunting out of a blind like this, an enclosed blind with windows, I bring something to block some of these windows. Today all I had was a towel, try to keep it as scent free as possible. It's not perfect, but I got as scent free as possible today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna block this window because the sun's gonna be coming through here and it's gonna silhouette us. We're at eye level with the deer. We wanna do everything possible to keep those shadows on us so they don't see the movement. Another tip is crack those windows because there's normally a seal. And if you wait until a deer shows up, they're gonna hear this. You don't want that, so you just crack it. Now it's nice and light, we can get that open. But on this one, I'm gonna just keep that down. Biggest thing is, whatever you're going to use, make sure it's as scent free as possible, but you still, you can't ignore the wind. Hunt the wind, do everything possible to reduce as much scent as possible, and you're going to have higher chance for success.